And uh, there is, in France, uh, a very good book recently published on uh, le climat après la fin du mois that uh, highlight this question about the conflicting priorities uh, we are facing. And uh, our next speaker will develop on this. Uh, I call Xavier Ploquin. Xavier was former advisor for energy, industry, innovation at the French Ministry for the Ecological and Inclusive Transition. So thank you for developing your point of view and element of answers. Thank you, James. Oh, it works. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, just like James, I will talk on my personal behalf and expressing my opinion and of the French government. But today I will present uh, the way uh, France's fight against climate change, uh, the difficulties it rose, and the innovative democratic solution uh, that we have tried to find. First, um, well, the slide is difficult. Um, I have to remind everyone that France is among the best in class when it comes to CO2 emission. The French economy can produce one dollar with 200 grams of CO2, when the US uses 400 grams, and the Chinese 600 grams. So it's a good result. But when you add up things, and you look at another graph, it appears, uh, you can see on the right side that the emission, the, the national emission are going down. The French people, they emit like six and a half ton of CO2 per year, which is more than the world average, which is between four and five. But if you look at the left and look at the carbon footprint of the French people, you see that it has always raised, it at best stabilized. It means that, what does it mean? It means that the French people are rich, they consume a lot of things, a lot of imported goods that emit carbon somewhere else. And it means thus that probably the French people didn't, didn't even notice the effort to reduce the, the emissions during the last 20 years. And it means that they will have to take into account the changes in the future much more strongly because it will imply changes in behaviors. Um, France uh, had a plan. Uh, President Macron had a climate plan in his political program uh, that was adopted in 2017. There are many things in this plan, but I would just say that um, this plan leads to the adoption of carbon neutrality in 2050, which is a huge step. And for instance, that it ends up uh, exploration and production of oil and gas uh, on the French ground. It's mainly symbolic, but it means that we have to leave the carbon underground if we want to stop the climate to heat. Uh, it's detailed in several plans, the multi-annual energy plan and the national low carbon strategy that defines the pathway towards the carbon neutrality. This is not like a countryside a peaceful path, actually. It's more like a jump of a cliff. I have a bar chart here that emphasizes this point. On the left side, there is the emission 1990s of France. In the middle, it's 2015. And on the right, it's what we are supposed to emit in 2050. Basically, it means that we have no carbon for power production zero carbon for transportation, zero carbon for housing and heating, little carbon for the industrial processes, and that we, could, we have to feed more people with half the carbon that we use today to feed uh, 60 million people. So this is a radical change, and people will notice that. And this is the difficulty. The plan also had a lot of levers, uh, power, transportation, building. I will not enumerate them but there was a cornerstone. It was the carbon tax. The parliament voted a carbon rise of 10 euros per ton per year, starting in 2017, with a target of 100 euros. Uh, it means roughly that uh, gasoline would increase in price of three euro cents per liter every year. You can think that it's small. It was supposed to be a long-term signal towards the decarbonization of our economy. It happened to be a short-term signal to massive protests. You may have seen these photos. It's why we call the Yellow Vest Crisis. Um, it started in October 2018, around the time when the parliament adopts the finance law. People starting to put on their yellow vest that they had to buy uh, a decade ago for safety reasons, and to occupy the roundabout uh, through the countryside to protest against a lot of things, but mainly targeted at car drivers mainly the carbon tax, but also speed limits and other uh, restrictions. It was a peaceful movement, 
that had a high rate of approval, around 70%. Um, it get tougher in November uh, with strikes every weekend. Every Saturday, since this time, there is a strike in various cities in France with sometimes thousands or dozens of thousands of people. <coughs> some were not peaceful. Some, sometimes there were black blocks inside the, the, the strikes. But it led to a major backlash. After three months of process, of protests, sorry, on December 4th, the Prime Minister uh, uh, stopped the carbon tax trade. Less than a week after that, the President announced approximately 10 billion euros new measures in favor of the purchasing power. So we started with a little raise in carbon tax and we ended up with no raise in carbon tax and more purchasing power which could raise the carbon footprint. So what are the solutions? Because on the same time, we also saw strikes on the street for climate change, mainly from youngsters. We saw the polls saying that the subject is rising and is one of the main preoccupations. And we saw that during the EU uh, vote, the Green Party ranked third, uh, way before uh, the traditional left and right parties. So there is something that says that people want to fight climate change, uh, especially the youngs, uh, but they don't want to accept any form of taxation. So that led the government to create three new structures uh, that were a kind of innovation in the way we uh, use the democratical process in France. Those three structures are the High Council for Climate. This is a council of 12 scientists that are independent from the government and they criticize the policy and the budget publicly. They bring trust in the system because we realized that people were not trusting the government anymore on those subjects and we had to externalize this. Uh, it's an equivalent to the British CCC actually, uh, Council for Climate Change Committee. We created another uh, governance structure, which is the Ecological Defense Council. Uh, this is the equivalent to the Defense Council, a gathering of the ministers every two months around the president uh, in order to shorten the decision process on the ecological subjects. Uh, I think it's the same in every country. It's impossible to make an ecological and ag agricultural minister uh, agreeing on something. Now they have to agree every two months they have decisions and some tough decisions were taken in the Ecological and Defense Council. And the last and probably more innovative solution is the citizen convention. Uh, we selected 150 citizens randomly, representative of the French society in terms of age, in terms of diplomas, geography. And they get six months to work, to learn about climate change, one weekend every month. And after those six months, they will deliberate about measures that President Macron's promised will be directly applied, either directly either submitted to the parliament or if it's something really important uh, to a referendum. Will it work? I don't know. What I know is that it is inspired of the Irish convention that led to the abortion right and that led also to the end of the blasphemy crime, for instance. So we put a lot of hope in this new way of making a democratic decision and I sincerely hope today that next year we'll be able to discuss the, the good solutions that will be not only applied but also accepted by the population in order to fight climate change because it will have, it will have been tailor-made for something that is representative of the real people in France. So, see you next year. Uh, thank you, Xavier. Uh, one part, one important component we heard yesterday Andre Bar notably talking about uh, sustainable investing, new ways of investing when we were discussing about Latin America, where ecology is a very important component, not only for Latin America, but for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm.